Father, we are chosen, not forsaken. You chose us because you love us. You put something in us, have something for us. You want to do something with our lives even more. You chose us. Not forsaken. That's huge, Lord, for people like me who my father wasn't there when I grew up. You take the sting out of it when you keep us in your hand. Not forsaken. So, Father, I thank you for giving me the tongue of the learned that I may know how to speak a word in season to them that are weary. That my speech and my teaching and preaching is not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but with demonstration and manifestation of the spirit and of power. Therefore, Father, I commit to give you alone all the praise and the glory and the honor for what will take place this day. And all of God's wonderful people said, Amen. You may be seated. Well, I want to start ministering again on identity, take a little different take today. And I would like to encourage you to follow along with us, and even in particular, the books we're referencing to you to read and study further, and books of the Bible to study more closely to understand uh, your identity. Because without understanding it, we're uh, influenced by it whether we recognize it or not. We all have, or trying to, probably best way of saying it, trying to create and develop an identity of who we are. That is the question people are trying to get answers to in all of life. Who am I? And oftentimes, as you know, we're trying to, find, we're trying to be somebody else and not who God created us to be. And it's not that uh, they're a musician and you're a sports person. Uh, it's not that things like that, they're in the computer business as opposed to history, teaching history. Um, but it's really the core of who you are. And it's that core that causes the, the challenge, that causes the, uh, yes, dysfunction, uh, that causes the hurt. Uh, because we really haven't addressed the core of who we are. And then we come to Christ, many of us, many here today, those watching online, uh, have come to Christ, but they haven't really addressed who they really are in Christ. And so when life happens, or life had already happened at some level, where a young child or a teenager, they, they have problems that carries on and puts another scar, if you would, in their heart. And what happens is that uh, they drift further away oftentimes from who God has created them to be. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk about identity. And so it's, I really appreciate how the praise team kind of weaves into the teaching because, you know, the words of the song is, I'm chosen, I'm not forsaken. Right. But it doesn't feel good to be forsaken. Amen. It doesn't feel good to be forgotten. Um, and so, but how oftentimes we live there not that we do it on purpose. We end up living there because that's our experience. But I want to share, share with you that as we begin to learn who we are in Christ, we can begin to adopt that identity in Christ. Say, in Christ. in Christ. And even though when I say in Christ, not just because you're a Christian now, that you're literally you're taking the scriptures and putting them in your heart and to your thinking so that now you're behaving differently. Now, things that had bothered you before don't bother you like they used to. Things you would not pursue, although you would like to, but just, you know, it's not me. I'm not a leader, for example. Uh, I'm not this. You know, I don't, I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a person that doesn't talk before people. Well, that's fine. But the issue is, why not? See, we all have choices, but if, when it's an unhealthy, we've got to address that because there's potential in you. Say more potential than me. It's not just... Human potential is what God wants to do in your life. And so what happens, there's a healing that takes place. And we're going to take time, and at the end of this teaching, we'll have communion. We're going to take time because God wants to heal broken hearts today. Because it's deeper than just the physical healing, which that God will do that as well. And that is what Jesus really is noted for, of healing physical bodies 
eye, blind eyes, and people had their legs healed and so forth. Wonderful. Raising the dead. Physical. But that's not what he came for. We're going to read. He came to heal the brokenhearted. And I read it many times for years, and I, finally it hit me, and I began to, wait a minute. You came to heal the broken hearts. So I'm going to talk about that a bit, and I believe it's going to connect the dots for you because uh, it's an opportunity for us to make some alignment closer with God's view of our, ourselves and how God created us so we can walk in it. Otherwise, we walk out of character. Yeah, we walk out of character. And that's the right phrase. We walk out of character. We're, we're walking in a place that's not us. And sometimes people have experienced, I don't know why I did, that's not me. Well, yeah, it's not you. Even as a Christian, it's not you. But because you haven't latched on to the true identity, you drifted to what, what was available. Amen. Like an old song back in the day when I was younger, love the one you're with. Mm-hmm. Now, your wife's over there, but you was. <laughs> and you realize, how did I get there? It's because we're not solid enough and clear enough about our identity in Christ. He says, in fact, let me just read a couple of scriptures to you. Is that Okay. I'm reading, I was reading this morning in Ephesians, and I suggest you read it on your own, Ephesians chapter 1 and chapter 2, but it says, specifically, you're chosen, as we've, as we've sung today. You're blessed. You're holy. Say, I'm holy. I'm holy. Now, what you've been talked about or you've been hearing lines in your mind of that you're, you're this or that, that's far away from the idea of holy because you messed up or whatever you may have done, you feel shame of. Guess what? God says in Christ, you're holy. Whether you're acting like that today or not, God says you're holy. You belong to me. Amen. So we need to adapt that. And when I start adapting my Christian, my godly identity, now I can behave that way. Now it's mine. Say it's mine. mine. That's what the Bible calls you in Christ. I'm blameless. Oh, that's a good one. Folk, want to hold, on, want to hold the, the past over your life? I, I, I know I forgive, but I won't forget. You know what? And that's, you've been blamed. They're, they're hurt. I get it. But God doesn't see you that way. He sees you blameless. No more blame in your life because he doesn't blame you. Are you following me? Now, this is important that we talk this way because when I talk this way, like, he doesn't blame you. But yeah, but my aunt blames me, though. My dad blames me, though. But it's not, if you're still going there, you haven't got it yet. If you're not accepting when God says you're blameless, but your mind comes up, thought comes up, but what about my aunt? What about my brother? What about my ex-husband? Are you following me? Those thoughts will come. Then you got to correct and say, no, but I'm blameless in God. I'm not receiving that. God has the final say in my life. And we have to decide. Say decide. decide. Whose report are you going to believe? What God says about you or what other people say about you. He says you're a child of God. Say I'm a child of God. We should talk that way. You let people know I'm a child of God. Certain things I don't do. I'm a child of God. It says you're accepted. I love it. You're accepted. Say I'm accepted. This is all in in chapter one and two of mostly chapter one of Ephesians. Take your time and read it. Look at those words, chosen, accepted, beloved. Say beloved. beloved. You know, sometimes you have families and it seems like that family may have a little preference towards somebody else. Give them more time, give them more money, more, more encouragement. And you feel like, well, you know, the devil starts talking to you. They start out with childhood. You know, your mom don't love you like they love them. He's, see, he's dealing with your identity from the very beginning. He's a thief. That's what we call it. Identity theft. It's time to get your identity back. Say, I'm getting my identity back. My identity in Christ. Then he says, you're loved and forgiven. This is also part of the communion because we're speaking this way. We want God to minister and go deeper today and take a little much of time. So this, I'm not preaching another sermon. This is it. Say, this is it. Now, you can never live free until you think free. In fact, read that out loud with me, please. You can never live free until you think free. Say it again, please. You can never live free until you think free. I'm referencing a book of mine uh, from a good friend, Miles Monroe, Burden of Freedom. I mentioned it last week. 
and I suggest you get it. Uh, it's a powerful book, powerful insight, and he talks about how, see, the walk in freedom, sometimes we have the wrong impression with Christianity, is that I'm saved, I gave my heart to Jesus, and yet I have some challenges. So we, sometimes we accept, we settle, I got these problems and these issues, and it's really an identity problem. You have to learn who you are. Amen. You got to put in the work. So there's the burden of responsibilities talking about to walk free. See, now that I'm in Christ, I have to be responsible enough to learn and then make changes and, and take steps to make it part of my life Amen. to walk free. Amen. And he talks about how slaves back in, in, in slavery time in America, when they got free, the, the physical change was off, but it wasn't off their thinking. And people who are born physical slaves will be born outside of Christ. Then we're in sin. We're slave to sin. Now we come to Christ, and we got all this in our in our DNA, in our physical DNA, and our, our emotions. And now now we're Christians, and we wonder why I haven't changed much. You have to find out who you are in Christ now. Amen. Say who I am in Christ. Who I am Christ. Because God gives every human being a choice, so we have to choose life, not death. And the verse here referenced here is Proverbs 23 and 7. The first part of that says, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. This speaks about how you think. So your identity is a function of how you think, y'all. And think of how you view yourself. Am I good enough? God says you're good enough. In fact, he sees you more than enough. But experience may not communicate that to you. That's my point. So we have to decide can I let, can I, am I going to define my experience in my life based on my experience over here or should I accept what God says in spite I haven't had, I've had five jobs in the last five years or one job in the last, or no job in the last five years. It can, it can take its toll, y'all. I'm, I'm not trying to play games. But unless we get secure in Christ, then the world is defining our joy, our peace, our life. Amen. And you are not, God did not send a son for, for us to have that kind of life where we have, we have no influence on how life turns out for us. We just hope it gets better. And identity is core to all that. Amen. Yeah. Good word. I, uh, I was watching a uh, documentary on Netflix, um, and it's, the name of it is Hello, Privilege, It's Time, uh, Chelsea. It's about white privilege. Please listen, this is powerful. And it, it's about it's an interview of people in different parts of the country, uh, white and African American, and about what their view of white privilege and how does it impact them. We're talking about identity. There's a part in the documentary where there's a white lady who's, who's kind of, I believe she's a producer, she's also interviewing the people, and really doing a good job. And she decided to go visit the, 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 the house where her boy, old boyfriend lived, back in the hood. Uh, he was African American. She's white Jewish lady, and um, and so she's doing this interview. And so she thought she'd come by and, and kind of haven't seen him in about in a, a long time because he'd been just got out of prison for 14 years, and um, and so she's going to visit with him. One thing she makes a comment about: she's learning things about quote unquote white privilege, and she says that I thought when I was hanging out with my boyfriend and police were driving in, in the in the community. And uh, I'm white, and, and, and then he's black, and then we get stopped by the police, and the policeman says, you go home and, and take him to jail, that I thought that happened because I was cute. <laughs> but after doing this documentary, I realized, oh, they gave me a privilege, gave me a pass. And, um, and so she's trying to get some things, how this, this is the way it is in, our, in many areas of, of America. And then she says, uh, she's beginning to talk about how talking to her mom, they're in the kitchen eating this nice southern type breakfast and they're, they're chopping it up and having a good time. And she began to ask her old boyfriend's mother, she asked her, well, how did you get on drugs? How you doing? I'm doing fine, but how did you get on drugs? He said, well, she says, you know, I, be honest. Look at her mom, her mom, the lady's mom's next to her. I was mad at my mama because she didn't marry a white man. And I want to wave her hair like that. And I said, that's how deep. Now, this is a racial issue, but I tell you, see, people want to be somebody else, anything else but me. That's a problem. 
And that's the root of human, not just white, not just black, not just brown, not just yellow, everybody, not just male, not just female, we all got the same issue. Mm -hmm. I, I use that as, as such, a, such a clear example. She's black and want to be white. And she goes to get on drugs. Yeah, it's real. Now, she's trying to deal with the pain. Uh, feel like I'm not accepted. I'm on the other side of the wrong, wrong side of the track, poor. Mm -hmm. My boy goes to prison, but she don't. Are you following me? And so she's dealing with this, and she thinks it's not fair. Uh, life is, is limited. Now, please understand, I'm pointing to the issue of identity. By the way, you can be white and rich and got all kinds of personal problems because you don't understand your identity. And we see that, we see that working out, uh, play it out in America, too. So not just ra not a race issue. It's you don't know who you are in Christ. That's my point. Amen. 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 Because if you're looking at what you can get in this world to define you, things, stuff. If if you don't, that's why some men. In fact, I was I won't mention his name. He's a very popular singer. He's he's doing this new documentary, finish up his tour. But he has this, this documentary about his life and all this. He's trying to find peace one of the most popular singers out there. You know, all kind of relationships. I'm thinking, he don't know who he is. He's trying to find a lady over here, a drug over there, another car, I got a garage full of cars, maybe that'll do it. You gotta find your identity in who? Christ. Christ. Without that, we're gonna drift, and it's gonna impact, and it plays out in our relationships, by the way. Not just between man and woman, but our brothers, our friends, our, re our relatives. How we handle disappointment. How we handle no. How we handle not today. Not now. Yeah. It's all about identity. And when we understand that, then we'll, well as Christians, now we can get prescriptions. I call it the, the God's scripture medicine. Another little book you can give, we give it out to those who respond to the altar call. You may have some, but I would suggest you read it or, and you can share with friends. A little booklet called In Him by Kenneth Hagin. It deals with scriptures in particular, not all of them, but a good number of them to get us, get you started about who you are in Christ. When you accept Christ, you're in him. He's in you. Now you got to learn about who that person is inside of you. Who the real you is. See, that's the issue, is discovering who you really are. Say, who I really am. So if you are not living with God's image of yourself, whose image do you have? In fact, read it out loud with me, please. If you are not living with God's image of yourself, whose image do you have? Say it one more time. You got somebody's, but it's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. And I'm not saying like style, you know, you know, music or, you know, we all have preferences and God makes us different. I, I get it. But there's some core things that drive every human being that we need to have. Be accepted. To be loved. And sometimes the people you've been acting, they don't love you the way you want to be loved. God will, loves you. He's always there for you. He just says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's some good love, y'all. And when you read through the scriptures, you see how people have, have cheated on God. Yeah, he calls it, you've gone a whoring on me. Yeah. <laughs> he goes there. You've gone a whoring on me, and I still take you back. Who does that but God? But if we don't understand that we our human relationship when there's challenge, we, we just sometimes we just really let the enemy amplify that in our emotions and our thinking, and we go there, and then we're just like, life is messed up because we didn't we weren't solid enough on who we are in Christ. Say in Christ. In Christ. And it goes deep that in, we need to understand how to be healed. Amen. How to receive the healing. And today is a healing time. Say it's healing time. Healing. Look at Luke chapter. 
4, verse 18, our, our verse we want to focus in on. And I'm going to focus on key words in this passage. It's one verse. But the key words that popped out, uh, and God began to minister to me. I said, I need a minister on this today, today and, this, and doing communion and give an opportunity for you to get ministered to and healed. Say healed. healed. Those watching, God wants to heal you. No matter where you may be watching from. In Russia, many of you are watching in Russia. Ukraine and Russia, yeah, they're all over the world that are watching this program. In Compton. In Chino. In New York. In Chicago. There's healing for you. There's healing. It says here, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me, notice the word, to preach the gospel to the who? Poor. He has sent me to heal the what? Brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recover what? Sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. Now, I want to focus on these key words again. The first one is the word spirit. Jesus is announcing his earthly ministry at this time. He's coming out, if you would. Uh, he's 30 years old. He just came off a 30, a 40 day fast. And he goes to church or the synagogue, opens up to the book here of Isaiah, because prophesying was, was referenced in Isaiah. He sees himself. This is, this is powerful. He finds himself in scripture. Yes. He found himself in scripture. And so he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And this is what God has called me to do. Now, the religious leaders, they know that verse. And they get an attitude because he's identifying with God. You mean you're taking that verse for yourself? Who do you think you are? They'll do the same thing about you too. When you start rising up, being who God created you to be, they'll get jealous, get mad at you. You a child of God. That's what the Bible says. You're forgiven. All that you did, that's what the Bible says. And they start hating on Jesus. And at the beginning of his ministry, starting out, trying to help people. And he opens up, but he finds himself in Scripture. My question to you, have you found yourself in Scripture? Just saying. If not, don't feel bad. Find it. Find yourself in Scripture. Because that's where your hope is. It's not gimmick. It's not something to do. It is truth. I'm telling you, I had such issues in my life. I didn't see my dad face to face until I was like 22 years old, finishing graduate school. I had to pay to go see him. It, it, was, it was, you know, but I, I, I just, but I was a Christian man. And I got a hold of this kind of teaching about who I was in Christ, and I just let it be settled in my life. I didn't debate it. I didn't say, what, but God. But I, I didn't do that. I'm, I'm beloved. I'm beloved now. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Yeah, had these girls have about five abortions, but I'm forgiven. I'm not bragging about it. Didn't like it. But you know what? I'm forgiven. I've accepted it. I identify myself in what? Scripture. Until you do that, we're going to be, we're going to be struggling like other people in the world who don't even know God, and yet we have Jesus in our heart. You have to identify with him. Say identify with him. Identify. Yeah. So the first word I want to focus on, word is spirit. It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that destroys the chains that limit our lives. Now, to give you a picture here. You see, the reference scripture is in Isaiah 10, 27. You can write it down on your own. Isaiah 10, 27. It's where the Spirit of the Lord talks, it's where that reference is, is that it destroys every yoke. Say it destroys the yoke. But a yoke is what you put around a, a cow to keep him, you know, so you're plowing the ground and so forth and, 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 and in the field. And so it's a big, heavy piece of wood. And he's on his neck. And so it's, it, he's controlled by it. He's not easily moved. He's a big, strong animal, but he's that yoke. And chain. And Jesus says, the anointing, which is power, supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, destroys. He didn't say, I take it off you. He didn't say, I dismantle it. I destroy it. 
So for what we're talking about, what's needed to be done with the history we all have in life, some of it goes deep. You need an anointing to destroy that yoke in your life. And my hope is that if we take time to hear this word and have a little time to allow God to speak to us personally, we don't have to tell everybody to say, God, heal my heart. Heal my heart. God brought you here today to have your heart healed. Amen. Without that, you're not open to his identity yet to receive it. Second word I want to talk about, look at, preach. Say preach. preach. We must first hear the good news of God's plan for our lives, for our lives. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Hearing and hearing. Say hearing and hearing. hearing, and hearing. Say hearing and hearing. hearing and hearing. This is part of the discipline of being a Christian. It's not just only hearing the sermons, but hearing your own reading. You can read it out loud, but you also hear it in your heart. What is God saying to you? What do you hear God saying to you personally when you read the scriptures? So I have to read it on my own to let it go deep. Amen. I can't get a build a brand new house or remodel a house and get some new sod out there and water it five times and I think I'm good for, for 10 years. Amen. I wonder why the weeds are out there now just dirt left. Hmm. We have to keep putting it in our heart. And part of it is we, because we're out in this world. Let me do it practically. We're out in this world. We see all kind of stuff. Images and, and, and words and, and on television and, and just driving down the street with billboards, people talking to you. We have different experiences. All those things are speaking to us. And Satan is such a thief, he's nipping at our identity. No, they don't like you. They don't want to give you that, that apartment. Look how they looked at you. They said, we're not, you know, you know it was in the newspaper and they have, a, they, have, they have some places available. But guess what? Now they're saying, oh, we have nothing available. Now you feel bad. And that's the, you're not good enough. Are you following me? We have to have an answer for that. And it needs to be in the what? Scriptures. Or else we all, the best of us, will fall prey to that. You got to have an answer in you. Or else we just, <laughs> it's like that cow, the yoke. You know, the, the, the farmer pulls him over. Go down this aisle. Okay. Oh, that hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the yoke. But when you walk free, we've been, we sing the songs, but we got to experience the freedom, y'all. And, and so it's not like, you know, you just, oh, what's, what is going to happen? It happens when we dig in and accept it and believe it and start walking in it. And it grows over time. It's not always, not clicking your heels and, um, instantly. You have to grow into this. She just said it this way. If you will continue in my word, imply it over time. Amen. You shall know the truth. You won't get to the truth about different aspects of your life. And then when you know it, you embrace it. It's yours. And then it says, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. I love it. It's like, it's like you don't get to the door of freedom and say, can I come in? No. When, you get, when you're free by knowing, you're free. The truth itself makes you free. It is, see, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Lord. That anointing on the truth destroys every yoke, everything in your way, and all you, you wake up one day, I'm free. Yeah. In fact, you may not know where it went. It is gone. That's what happened. That's, that's why you got to have the spirit involved. That's why we're talking about this verse. Jesus was sent to do this. Why he came, I was anointed. I'm anointed. I bring power with me. And I'm preaching so they hear and get it in the heart. Amen. Poor. Say poor. poor. Know the word. He preached the gospel, the good news to the poor. He's not talking about just people who don't have any money or welfare, what have you. God's message is for those with a poor self-image on the inside of their heart. You can have all kind of money, all kind of, you know, entourage, got a good, powerful, very broad social media presence, you're famous, got a big following. Wonderful, I'm not knocking that. And yet you may not be happy, may not have peace, may not like you. 
mean, you got a stage name. You got a, you know, presentation at the work, at the job, manager, supervisor, whatever. But you go home driving. And so he's talking, I'm preaching the gospel to the poor with self-image. And so I know, I, I know it's because it's so real for everyone, myself included. I know how some of you may feel, and all I'm saying is that let God continue the healing process. He's, that's why I'm doing this. This is the Spirit of God leading me this way. I've never done this like this before. Where I didn't preach another sermon behind it. I said, God, you want, I want to give you time to talk to the people, let it go deep, so, so they get healed, and now they be encouraged to go deeper, let you continue the healing process in their life. Amen. And stay healed. Say, stay, stay, stay healed. That's it. Let's do the word. There's no shortcut. No shortcut. Yeah. No shortcut. You got to put in the work. Another word. Heal a phrase. Heal the brokenhearted. Wow. Healing the broken hearts of those who are suffering from giving up on their dreams. That's huge. The Bible says hope deferred, put off, makes the heart sick. That's scripture. I was close to my business, and I'm about to get a break, and I do it later. They promise, and pretty soon, it, oh, disappointment, dreams, hopes, on deferral. They put off. Yeah. So you may have a good job. Money in the bank, that's not, that's not what God's dealing with. Sometimes we, let, we think that stuff's going to satisfy us and, and define us, give us a good, a, help me feel good about myself. When we go home at night and it's just us and God, that's why men drink. They use drugs. Women do the same thing. No peace. And it's not that you're a bad person. It's... it's, it's you're not secure in yourself. And you're trying to find something in the wrong place to satisfy it. Amen. Only God can do that. That's why you're here. And even some of you who have been coming on a regular basis, part of the church, this is, this is your issue. If you have issues in any, any area, this is it. Say, this is it. This is it. Because you start seeing the ripple effect. You solve this one, it's going to solve a whole bunch of problems in your life. There's doors that are ready for you to walk in. But in your mind, that's not for me. And yet it solved many problems in your life on a practical level. Yeah. See, Satan comes to hurt your heart so we can suffer because we're giving up the dreams are put off. And we finally just, you know what? It wasn't for me. We make excuses. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't for me anyway. You know, uh, that's not what you said five years ago. I know we said, oh, we, we, we try to patch it up. I get it. I get it. And maybe it wasn't for you. Maybe there are times. I'm not knocking that. But too often it's, it's just, you know, what I'm trying to say. Liberty. Say Liberty. It's freedom to use our gifts and talents to live out God's plan and purpose for our lives. We sing about it all the time, even today, freedom. But it's free dominion. It's free to walk in your dominion that God gave to man. Have dominion in the earth. Use your gifts and talents and be creative and manage and run the earth and everything in the earth. You're free! Or we say, well, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't go to other states. I, I like California. I like California, too. But I can travel, can I? I don't fly on airplanes. I, I don't. So we put boundaries, and we act like we're not free. So we convince ourselves that it's, I can stay in a box. And it's okay if that's what you believe you're called to do, and, and that's what you want. But what I'm getting at is when you stay in a box, and you really want to be out of the box. That's my, that's my issue. I'm just in that. Where you, where you, maybe the box is really nice, but why is that the only box you want to, why would not update the box? 
Why not put a little color on the box? Why not expand the box? Why not help folk and bring folk into your box? Oh, that's a good one. You know how kids do. They get in a little place, in a little play area, and somebody want to play. I don't know you. <laughs> they start grabbing stuff. <laughs> and so it's experience, prior experience. Those are learned behaviors. But part of knowing who you are in Christ is not just God knows your name. That's another song we sing. But he's, what he's given to you defines your identity, what you have, and who you are to him. Your God. He's your deliverer. He's your protector. So, you, so fear can go away when you realize, God got my back. And if it does be taken away, there's more where that came from. I'm good. I give me a brand new one then. Okay. I'm not going to worry about stuff. But when you don't know who you are in the total context, then we have all kinds of stuff to be afraid about. And got plenty of it. <laughs> I mean, folk, I mean, you read some books about people who are very wealthy, they're afraid they're going to lose everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, they got a whole bunch of stuff. Now they're afraid. Come on. That's not the devil. The devil is messing with people. Yes, and he's messing with us, right. messing with you, and messing with me. Mm -hmm. But I'm taking my, I'm giving, I give him an answer. When I realize what's happening, I said, oh, you gone, you stepped in, get out of my room. Amen. 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 This ministering to you? It'll help your children, you raise your children, because they begin to develop a low identity that's not who they are because of experience in school and life. And if it's not healthy, it's not where, you, where they should be based on biblical scriptures, you got to help them. And it's only the words. It's a pep talk is nice, but you need to have the scriptures. You're chosen, Johnny. Amen. Susie, you're beloved. I love you, but God loves you. Amen. Jesus said, he's always with you. When you go camping, he's with you. He's always there. They, Johnny and Susie may need that, especially if they get lost on the trail. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. While some folks or kids may get lost and they got problems, are they aware that, Jesus, you're with me? I don't know how to get back to the campsite, but Jesus, you're with me. Help me, Jesus. Yeah. And speck an answer, now they're finding the way. Are you following me? Yeah. Or somebody comes and helps them. Are you following me? Yeah. They cry out to God because they know who they are in Christ. Yeah. When you think you're by yourself, I'm out there lost. In the campground, oh, they cry. <sighs> we got to teach our children this too. This is huge to all mankind because that was, this is the area that Satan came to deceive Adam and Eve. He questioned her. And he go, he's still questioning you and me too. I got an answer for him. I trust you do too. Amen? Amen. Two more. Sight, ability to see again. Say see again. see again. The great possibilities we have in life and see ourselves as God sees us. I love it, I love it, I love it. Say, see myself as God sees me. Notice to see again the great possibilities. You know, we have dreams. I mentioned about the dreams deferred, hope deferred. Sometimes, you know, you kind of, well, maybe that's not for me. You kind of, I understand, maybe if you, if you try to be a pro football player and now you're 45, that ain't happening, okay? <laughs> it's most likely that you have to start your own, own league. <laughs> so I understand those kind of practical things, but to start a business, to thrive in life, I mean, it's amazing how smart God is if we work with him and I had to work with you, he can help you figure it out. It may take a few minutes because it may be beyond you to work out the situation. There are products today that could not be invented 20 years ago or 10 years ago, and it, and it was in somebody's mind 10 years ago, and they're struggling with it. But finally, the, the technology grew up with, developed further. Oh, yeah, you're going to get this. And when I was, we had a computer company when I was in the early 80s, and, and we had the first the, the, the desktop computers, and, and before them was only mainframe like IBM, and so they started talking about it then in the early 80s that you have a computer in your hand. People laughed at that, that, that idea. It was in somebody's mind, though. A computer, whether well, that iPhone or Android is a computer in your hand. It's a phone, too. Yeah. It's a camera. 
It's a GPS system. It's a storage place. Oh, yeah, go get this. Somebody thought of it, but it couldn't make it happen until it's due season. Sometimes the deferral is not no. It's just we got more work to do. And be patient. Keep your vision alive. If God's in it, he'll bring it to pass if you don't quit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Galatians 6. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due what season you shall what? Reap if you faint not. Give up on your vision. But why, how does that happen? Look, Satan's lying to you about you're not good enough. It's not for you. God didn't give that great thing to you. Not, from, not, from, not you. You know, you just finished high school. That's all you got. I know people make all kind of good money, and all they have is a high school diploma, diploma and they run major billion dollar organizations okay but they have a different self-image though <laughs> and yeah they've learned on the job maybe take a class here or a class there a program here and got some skills okay, got to bring skills to the table but they didn't say I don't have the if I don't have the degree I can't do this job be quite honest for most companies the degree is just a, a weed out they'll teach you what they want you to know anyway okay and you just prove to them you can finish something Okay, because they're going to teach you what they need you to know. Satan blinds the minds of them that believe not when we give up hope. So when we don't believe what God says about us, we doubt it, Satan comes in and he blinds you. You can't even see it now. Therefore, we cannot see greater possibilities because we don't believe. Believing is huge. You got to believe what the Bible says that you've chosen in spite of your background. Amen. If you, if you, you may not say you don't believe it, but we act like, and, and it's, in our, it's not in our heart, you kind of, ah, you don't believe it. That's why it may take a little time to let God go deeper in your heart. And heal. Say heal. Because heal. loss takes place in our lives. People die. People go away. Things happen. Loss of all kinds of things. Jobs, careers, opportunity. Make another one. Another what? Opportunity. Right. Read Joshua chapter 1. It says, go back to the word. This book of the law, chapter, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou shalt observe to do, you got to do something, all that is written therein, then you make your own way prosperous. Wow. So, doors closed, you make your own way. Not without God, you, you and God. If, folk, you, if you're left by yourself, just you and God on island, okay, make you, me and you, God, I'm going to make my own way, following your instructions, following your leading. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good word. Until you start thinking that way, greater possibilities are far away from us. All right. And it's always and it's God's will for our lives and for our children. Say for our children. children. But sometimes the parents talk out of our kids. Johnny, don't you can Johnny, you can't. I've had folk in our church over the years. Come here crying after after service. I talk about starting businesses and stuff and going to college and doing this. And, and they said, my, my mom, when they got mad at me because, you know, they said, we don't, nobody in my family, our family starts businesses. What are you trying to do? You think you're better than us? Identity. Identity. In a whole household. You got to know who you are. Amen? Amen. Final one. Liberty again. Notice it's twice. Liberty. Freedom from the limitations of Satan and the people. Say the people. Who don't see great potential inside us. Read it, but read it in the last part where it says, inside us, say inside me. Inside. Freedom, say, read the whole thing. Freedom from the limitations of Satan and the people who don't see great potential inside me. Say it again. One more time. Say it like you really mean it. You may have a boss, manager, company, teacher, professor, whoever, parent, brother, sister, don't see the great potential inside you. While the rest are prepared to bring the communion, I want to allow you to think more deeply about what was shared. Because the true freedom means we are free to walk in our God-given dominion in the earth.
God and partake of the Partaking of the Lord's table, the communion table, was very important because this is a healing time. Over the years, people get healed physically in these times, but not just physically. God wants to heal your heart too. Why? That's why Jesus came. He wants to heal from the inside out. From the inside out. Don't give up on your hopes for your kids. Your husband do a better job or get a better job or your wife, don't give up. You may have to use your mind, though, and let God speak to your mind about how to figure things out because the solutions are in the earth. That's why it's important to travel and learn because everything you need is in this earth realm. It's in the earth already. Everything you see here around you was made out of the earth. Elements in the earth. The clothes you have on was made out of the elements of the earth. Everything you need in the, is in the earth. God speaks to you, but you resolve it with stuff in the earth. You make stuff out of the earth. When we get that, we say, God, what do you want me to do? Who do I need to talk to? But sometimes we got that yoke. And that's that lie. Go over here. Don't go over there. Get back over in your place. Okay. So I want to encourage you. As you receive your communion elements, the wafer representing the body of Christ and the cup representing the blood of Christ, to ask God to heal your broken heart. Ask God to restore your identity in Christ or give you, if you're not a Christian, your identity in Christ. And ask Lord to help you embrace it. Don't run from it. Don't push it away. This song we're about to sing is about what was lost in battle, was taken unlawfully. Satan does that. He's a thief. He's an identity thief. It was done unlawfully. He had no right, but it happened. It was wrong what was done to me. Yeah. Understand, that's the thief. But God has a way, has a way out. He has help. But we have to receive what he has for us. Power of God is here. The presence of God is here. The power of His Spirit is here. The anointing is here. If you just be open to receive, as you hold your communion elements, be open to receive.
take communion so we won't forget about Jesus and what he's done for us. He paid an awesome price and died on the cross so we could be saved and live forever with he and the Father. But communion and remembering him is also what he's provided for us and being aware of what he's provided for us and identity with him. Take, eat, break the bread as we see our healing in our own body, in our mind, in our own heart. Now, in Jesus' name. He took the cup and said, this is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink it, do it and remember to me this drink. If you would, if it's easy or convenient, you don't have to get up, but if there's someone nearby, you can just touch their shoulder or, or someplace on their arm or hand as a point of contact. And those watching online, as a point of contact would be your device. If there's a person next to you, you can touch their hand or their shoulder. I'm going to declare healing. There's no distance with God. There's an example in scripture where the centurion came to Jesus to heal his ailing servant. Jesus says, I will come heal him. He said, no, there's no need to do that. I'm not worthy anyway. Then he said this, just speak the word only. You may say, well, that was Jesus. He can do that. That's why you got That's why you watch it. Because you don't understand how when you identify with him, you can speak as he speaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do what he does. Jesus said that. And greater works, you do what I do, and greater works shall you do, because I go to my Father. When you get an identity, you act like it. You speak like it. You do what he calls you to do. He was our example. That's why he came. So as we lay hands on one another, I thank you, Father, for the healing anointing here in this house. And not just in the sanctuary with the children on the children's church, nursery, preschool, infant, Lord. Heal, Lord God. Let the anointing flow on this campus, Father. Those who are working in the parking lot, those who are outside. Heal, Lord God. Let the anointing flow. And heal hearts. Heal minds. Heal bodies. In the name of Jesus. I declare it so. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father for the healing power, that anointing that removes every burden, destroy every yoke. And our, our, our understanding and openness to receive now your scriptures, our medicine of scriptures in our heart. We are who you say we are. We can do who you say we, what we can do. We have what you say we have. And you are to us what you say you are to us. Good. <laughs> Merciful, loving, caring, can't take us out of your hand. You got us in your grip, Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I sense it in my hands. Yes, the power of God is here. Just receive it. Receive it. Just receive it. Receive it. Let's begin to play something like you know, normally play. That's a song on the piano. Let's play something else. Let's just play softly. Let the Spirit of God, let the psalmist play. Go on, Chris. Let's be in the, one of the songs. Get kind it of soft. God is here. God is here. I, I, I know we got to dismiss and have an, have an invitation, but let, let God finish. Let's go and play softly. Let's let the Spirit of God moves upon you. kind of a, not a song that I sound like when a song we, we sing. Something we don't sing. Something you play. You play before. Let's talk. Let's go. Let God talk to you. Use you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just play and it'll come to you. It'll come. The Spirit of God is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's here. He's here. Yeah, that's it. That's it. He's here. 
and that he's, he's talking to you, he's showing you things. He's letting you know that this area of identity is important to you. It'll help your marriage, help you respond to conflict and misunderstandings differently. Even as men, we'll begin to see ourselves not as my dad may have been an example for me or my uncle or another man or I see on television, but as you see how men should love. They're kind, they're patient, not hard, not macho, not rough with their spouses and their children. Yeah, on the football field, but not with the people they love. So we begin to see how to do this, this life, by seeing God, the Bible says God is love, and yet he's strong and mighty. The Bible describes love in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians that is kind and patient, long-suffering. Sometimes we don't want to suffer, yet you suffer for other things, brother. You suffer a lot on the football field. Play, put me back in. You've got a broken arm. Put me back in, coach. For suffering for your family. Sometimes it's maybe your wife is not as mature as she needs to be and you're suffering, you're loving her and, and putting up with her and dealing with her and helping her, encouraging her. That's part of the suffering. Maybe your children aren't really acting the way and they're maybe going the wrong way, but you're loving them. It's patience. It's, 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 that's, that's the way God loves. We have to see ourselves. So God wants to heal. And as you begin to open up the, the scriptures in your heart, you start seeing how God does it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's let God minister. Let God minister. Let God show. You watching online, the Spirit of God is moving right now. Let God minister. And if it helps, lift up your hands toward Him. We want to look up to Him. I depend upon you, Lord. Heal my heart, Lord. This is Ed Smith. Lord, heal my heart too. Yeah, yeah. Any area that's, 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 that's tender, where I'm sensitive, is tender in my heart. Heal my heart, yeah. Oh, Jesus, heal my heart too, Lord God. Heal my heart. Yes, Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Heal my heart, Lord God. Heal my heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay to cry out a little bit if you want. It's God, it's, just, it's us, us and God, come on. Lord, heal my heart. I receive the healing of my heart, Lord God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heal my heart, Lord. Yes, heal my heart, Lord. people now. Healing the hearts. Healing the minds. Healing the bodies. Healing their life. Jesus. Heal the heart, Lord. Heal the heart, Lord. Yes, Lord. Receive your healing. Oh God. Worship him. 